Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video on this channel and we will have a look into passing cookies between requests on the server side with use request fetch and event dollar fetch. Don't know what it is, let's check it out. When going full stack with Nox, Nitro and H3, there are a lot of things you can do. You can build your own API routes and server routes, your backend for frontend as you've seen maybe in one of the other videos they've published and of course, there are some important parts there, like you want to authenticate for an API, you set a cookie and it should be nicely passed along, right? If you make calls to your backend for frontend and if they're proxied or just maybe even if you make calls inside your backend to other functions. And some of you might wonder, okay, sometimes things don't work as they seem to work. Um, maybe sometimes cookies are not getting passed the right way and in this video we'll have a look why that might be the case, what are scenarios you have to take a look into on the server side, so on Nitro and H3 side, and also on the client side with a Nuxt application. So let's dive into a demo application and see what we can do and how things work together. Our demo application is as minimal as usual. We have some dark mode enabled very easily. The future compatibility version, so this is all on Nuxt 4, which is why we have an app folder and a server folder over here. And we have a compatibility date just set so we don't get any warnings and dev tools are enabled as well. From there we can take a look into our app that view. Our app that view is just showing the current route. We get a next URL to navigate, so from slash to slash other and from slash other back to slash, just so we can uh, do client-side navigation because we're all in that app that view. I didn't set up pages because, well, this is enough for our application to work. I log the route path on the screen, of course, and we have our navigation URL over here. And on the server side, there's nothing happening. We have a test API route, which just do nothing. This should be a to-do, which we will continue from here. And if we take a look at the browser, this will look like the following. We start with a slash, and then if we navigate to slash other and back and forth. So pretty straightforward. And before we get going with our business logic, let's just create an API endpoint, which just prints out all the cookies it gets sent to for debugging purposes, and also that will be used throughout our application. When we start pretty simple, we can say, okay, you know what, const cookies equals get cookies, or you know what, there's no get cookies because you can only get one cookie here with this h3 helper, right? So what we can do instead is we just get a header and we get the cookie header from the event. Then we have all the cookies here and then we return cookies.split. So we ensure these are nicely split by the semicolon space. So we have each cookie key value pair there. And of course, if we want to, we can say if the header doesn't return anything, we just send an empty string and we're good. So now we want to call this on the client side at some point, but first let's test out if that actually works. And for that, let's check the browser. And here we see, okay, test equals one is returned. And that's because if we check the storage on my local host, I have a cookie called test and the value is one. So that's definitely available and that works already. Perfect. So now we want to maybe call it on client side, but before, Let's talk about another scenario. What if I have a request that I want to call in maybe a, a different API route that should forward all the cookies? So think about like, okay, I want to hit up a different API route to start a job or to send uh, something to a third party API. And of course we want to send over all the cookies from there. What do we do? Well, as you might know already, we have the dollar fetch function in our natural part. And let's see if that works. And if not, what we can do instead. So let's create another route and we call that route cookies.ts. And we just copy everything we got from here, right? So this will serve as the route that shows the cookies. And in our test route now, what we wanna do is we wanna just return dollar fetch. And of course, what we wanna fetch is slash API cookies. So th that's basically all, we just call another uh, endpoint. And very importantly, we also know that dollar fetch emulates the requests in Nitro. So it doesn't actually do a full HTTP call, no, Instead, if it's also a Nitro API endpoint, it will just execute the event handler in here, which is pretty smooth and also improves the speed, of course. If you now move back to the browser and refresh, then we'll see that the cookies are empty now. It's, it's not there anymore. Even though in the storage, the cookie is still here. It's still available. So we did something wrong, question mark, or what's the problem? Well, the issue here is mainly that if you use dollar fetch, it will be a fully new request. It won't pass on cookies automatically because maybe you don't want that behavior. Mainly because, well, a third party APIs might not should get all the login authorization whatsoever cookies. So that's actually a reasonable idea. But what if you want to do it? Now we could start like, okay, sure, we can just pass it along by getting all the headers from the event 
and uh, passing them all into dollar fetch is like okay let's let's do that but even then we still might have to sort out things like do we want to pass in headers like um i don't know the host or the accept header probably not so luckily nitro and h3 they provide something very nicely uh, together we'll have a look into internals in a bit called event dollar fetch so let's use this and see how it works so instead of returning dollar fetch, we just return event dollar fetch, and this is all the changes that we have to do. And if we now refresh the browser, we'll see, oh yeah, wonderful, test equals one is back. So what's exactly happening here? Is this really the, the whole fix? The answer is yes, because this is the fetch instance that's bound to the event. Maybe you should have a look in the internals in GitHub straight away to see what's actually happening here. And we start with Nitro, because in Nitro, this event.fetch is actually defined. The link, of course, to all the code snippets, to the code, and also to the GitHub code here, they're all in the description. So if we have this event.fetch in here, we take the request and some initial values here, and then a function called fetch with event is called. We have the event passed in, the request, and the fetch, and that's it. So Basically, there will be a fetch instance bound to that event with fetch with event. And you might wonder, okay, where is this coming from? We check line eight here and we'll see, all right, this is coming from H3, right? So H3 is the underlying HTTP framework. You can compare it with something like Express and Nitro is basically using that, adding some DX on top, some integrations with, for example, DB0 from, for cross WS, uh, for unstorage, so all the cool things we've seen before. So now we have to jump one more level down, one level deeper into H3 and see what's actually happening in there. And of course, I also prepared that little code snippet on GitHub and it's here. In the proxy TS file, we have this fetch with event function, make a fetch request with the events context and headers. And that's exactly what we want, right? We want all the headers, we want the full context there uh, because now we think like, wait, what's the context? What's the idea behind that? Well, let's jump in the actual code and, and show you once again. So, of course, you can modify the context of an event, right? You can say like event.context.whatever equals one. That's very helpful to, for example, set up uh, things like Sentry, as I showed in my blog post, uh, or other, like Prisma, for example, things you want to use throughout the request further and further. You want to maybe initialize, pass on, and use. Also, for example, the session, the user, next off utils, and so on, also very helpful for that. So that's necessary. But of course, if you use dollar fetch here, then you will not have this context passed on. While if you use event dollar fetch, then the context of this event will also be passed here over to cookies. So then the context is available. Otherwise, the context object might be empty or might be unset, depending on what your middlewares are doing, depending on a lot of things. So this is, of course, an important part of this fetch with event here. We can ignore the types for now, that's fine. We have the event, the request, initial info, and the context and some options, and then get fetch will be called. And that's also interesting because get fetch is mainly saying, okay, give me the available fetch function. If you use an older node version, then you might have to use a polyfill, but that's it. Then we take the context and set the headers. It's also interesting to see that we have a get proxy request header function here, uh, and this will actually check if there are ignored headers because we don't want, as mentioned before, pass along something like a transfer encoding, connection, keep alive, upgrade, and all these things. Also the accept header to say what kind of type we want. We have to specify it manually then, because yeah, otherwise it would come to weird scenarios that we might not necessarily want. And then from H3, we go up again to Nitro. We have that event dollar fetch eventually there, and then we are in the code and it works out. And you might wonder now, okay, why do you all explain all of this if you might not even use the backend for frontend or Nitro and H3 and all of that? And I'll tell you, well, because it's still important even if you say you call a third-party API. And let me show how by just, well, calling the API we just built into our frontend. We reuse it there and see difference, especially when using use async data. Let's remove event context, whatever here again. We keep the event fetch. And now in our app.view, what we want to do is we want to say, okay, you know what? Let's say const uh, data, let's name it data from uh, use fetch. And we just say use fetch here. And of course we want to call, of course we want to call slash API slash test. We don't want to call cookies directly. It doesn't matter too much, but let's uh, check that out. And just like data from use fetch, we just log here the response. And now we go into a browser on localhost 3000 and see what's coming out there. We should see all the cookies, and we do, test one. And also if we navigate along, we don't see anything changing. 
because, well, things are the same. And this request won't happen again. Now, let's improve this a little bit to see what's happening on the client side. So what we're going to do in the client side, we have another option here saying watch, and we want to watch the router path here for getter. And that makes sure that whenever the route path changes, this function will be re-executed. We can also await this here. Doesn't matter too much for this case, but the watch is important. So if we ever do a client side navigation now, this one will be refreshed and refetched. So now maybe we can also have a, a P, let's say VF pending. Then let's just say loading. And uh, then we have maybe a div and say the else because we want to show the data. Of course, we have to define pending now. So let's say const pending uh, is a computed and we can also just use the pending from here, but we just make a computer straight away saying uh, use fetch pending. Uh, it is deprecated, that's correct. So you can also use the status instead. So we can say use fetch status. That's uh, even a bit more correct and better here. So to say use fetch status is equals to pending. Then the whole thing is pending, of course, dot value. And then we're good. So this is pending. When this is the case, we will add another call in a bit. But uh, let's let's come to that in a second. First, let's see what will happen in the browser. We're here. We can refresh it. It's all good. We can navigate. We saw like pending for a split second. We click a bit more like loading and then that will change. So far, so good. That seems all right. That, that seems fine. The cookies are passed. The initial request on client side request all fine. But now the interesting part, we used use fetch here, right? And now we go one step lower, right? With a lower building block with use async data, which you might use if you have like a custom repository pattern with, with dollar fetch, as I've shown in another video, or a third party fetching API library like Axios, your open API client whatsoever, and see how that behaves. And for this, we copy this code we have over here right away. And we say, instead of use fetch, of course, we just say use async data. And then we add the pending to say, or use async data status, the value equals pending. That's also why I didn't use it straight away. The watch is also still fine. We should be able to use this, but this part here has to be adapted. So what we want, of course, is here we have a function and we want to call dollar fetch. This is more or less layman's implementation of use fetch without some of the goodies. So maybe let's uh, break that down here, format it. That looks a bit better. We save it here, the watch still applies. And now we also want to render the data, but here we say uh, use fetch. And then we have another P tag to say use async data. All right, put that in here and let's see what happens now if we refresh the browser. And it's it's empty here. The whole thing is not available. It's it's fully gone. The cookies are not there. If I never get on client side though, they appear again. So now the question is, is this a bug? Do we need like to fix Nox? Should we send a PR straight away? No, we don't. This is intended. And it's the same idea as with event or dollar fetch that we just shown in on the Nitro part. You don't necessarily want to send all the cookies the client sends to you during SSR to any particular server. So can we improve this? Can we change this? Well, because we've used fetch at work, so there might be a way. And yes, <laughs> there, there is a way. So let us quickly show how to implement that and then dig into the internals and you will see some similarities there. And luckily to fix that is not that big of an issue because we just have to replace dollar fetch here by use request fetch. Don't forget, now we have to call the function. It's not as just dollar fetch, but this will return the right fetch instance, which then calls the API. And that's technically all. Now we can check out the browser. And if you refresh, bam, the cookies are there. They work, they're fine, easy, all good. On the initial request, but also after. And now I might wonder, okay, what's, what's the magic? What's the magic behind this use request fetch? Let's check it out in the Nux source code itself on GitHub. And we can jump to the ssr.ts file in the composables folder in the Nux package. And we have this use request fetch available for quite a while and not very well documented. On that, before we dive into the code, if you want to, if the video helped you, there is an open issue tagged as a good first issue to document exactly that event of dollar fetch and use request fetch. That's your chance to get into open source. We'd love to see some contribution coming out of that video. So link below. Go for it, please. Love to see that. But now back to the code and explain why we need this and how it works. 
And luckily, his request patch is not that... Well, it's not that long, it's just a couple lines. Of course, the type is global dollar fetch, and on the client side, it will just return exactly this, that global this dollar fetch that Nux sets the global instance. But on the server side, so if it's not the client side, then use request event will be called, and if it's available, then use dollar fetch, and otherwise fall back to whatever is available globally. And now we dig into it further, use request event, defined just a little bit further up, what does it do? It will get nuxtapp.ssr context if it's available dot event. So this event that will be got here is more or less the serialized event from Nitro during SSR. Because if you've seen my Nuxt versus Nitro video, also definitely recommend to watch that. Otherwise, I explain real quick. There is one time when basically Nuxt and Nitro they like shake hands and work together in the same time, which is basically when you server render your Nuxt application, right? Then Nitro is server rendering it, returns that, and then in the client side, of course, like Nuxt and view are initializing again, getting everything ready, hydration, and so on, so on. But at that point, on the server side, there is that event available, that request available, how it will be probably named in the future. Like, and not to confuse it with like an, I don't know, click event, it's really a request event coming from Nitro and H3 being serialized in the server side rendered context. And in there, you have also this fetch Function, right to make sure okay you can actually fetch it with the information from the event so pass in the cookies pass along what we've just seen what we did in our own API endpoint and that's the magic let's say behind uh, use request fetch and now we'd wonder as I said why not do it by default well of course security and giving people the choice for use fetch this is happening under the hood because you might want that for use async data it's also like you can't really well Let's say you can't fully polyfill that as well because you can't just say like, oh, here's a random uh, fetching library. Let's just do the same, like use request whatsoever because what we get here is the dollar fetch um, out of it. But if you want to use like Axios or something else, it might be a bit trickier to achieve. It depends how you set it up. But yeah, that's, that's the whole story behind it. There's also an open issue to like make it easier to define factory functions. Um, but yeah, that might be a topic for another video. So far... That's uh, that's the whole magic and idea behind it. And now you might know why passing log cookies might not work as expected. We've digged down from Nux, Nitro, H3, all the layers and levels. And I hope uh, that helped you better understanding the issue. Let me know if you have uh, any more questions, comments, suggestions, feedback. I'll read through all of them. Uh, other than that, check out all the videos mentioned. They're also in the description. The latest stage review episode as well. Uh, and until then, I would say see you either next Friday or in older videos or newer videos if you watch it a bit later. Uh, and happy hacking. Stay tuned. <laughs>